Bates now um, working initially part time for the first 18 months and then uh, um, went full time in it. And Robin joined me about four or five, about five years ago now, actually. Uh, I'm just trying to put, put the presentation up. Um, but I can't see the slides, so I'm not sure why. Two seconds, see if I can find these slides. Aha, got them. Okie doke. So really tonight what I'm going to talk about is getting back on track because you know obviously we're going through quite a lot of the challenges within the company at the moment um, but there's no reason why you can't get your business back on track. Um, yeah, you know, a lot of it's been out of our control. In fact, it's all been out of our control. But circumstances are the circumstances. You know, it is what it is. And uh, we can work through it. And tonight I'm going to give you some great hints and tips on how uh, you can work through it beyond 2017 and into next year. Because what you do now in the next few weeks and months will make a difference on how you start 2018 and how your business is going to go. So, um, yeah, okay. So yeah, it's been tough. As I say, circumstances beyond our control. Um, you know, sometimes it's worth thinking, if you can't control something and you don't have any influence over it, why worry about it? You know, yes, we've all been concerned about some of the challenges that we've been thrown at. Um, but, you know, you, if you can't change it, don't worry about it, just get on with it. And, and that is so true because it's the best way to... Uh, to deal with the situation that we that we that we're in, you know, and sales have been affected. Not so much the sales coming out of the catalogs. You know, I've seen some phenomenal sales, not only on my customer base, but some of my own team members as well, are coming out with some phenomenal sales at the moment. Um, you know, we've got the best catalogs we've had in years, um, but of course we can't fulfil all of the orders because of out stocks and uh, you know products that aren't um, haven't been unpacked in the new warehouse. So as a result, yes, it's affected incomes. You know. Um, it's affected your income, it's affected my income, it's affected everyone's incomes. And it's been, you know, frustrating at times. You know, it's down to the sort of limited resources that the company had. You know, they never planned to move as quick as they did. Um, yeah, we earlier this year they were talking about moving and they were going to have a three-month um, sort of transition period starting in July and finishing end of September, early October. Of course, what happened was... Um, Circumstances, again, beyond clean easy's control, they had to get out of the previous warehouse uh, in two weeks, not three months, and had to literally shove everything in boxes and move, um, unpacking at the other end with no order, no, you know, no rhyme or reason, and everything, you know, just kind of struggled at the beginning. Um, you know, the, the new warehouse didn't have a testing phase, they had to employ 100 new staff, um, and they, again, they were supposed to give them three months training so that when they did fully transition, they'd be up to speed. And of course, they didn't have that opportunity. They had to get going straight away, training the staff on the job whilst packing our orders with the uh, errors that came as a result. But a lot of that has now settled down. Uh, yes, deliveries are still taking about a week, but, you know, there aren't errors in the orders anymore. Still, obviously, some products that haven't fully been unpacked and there's some out of stocks as well. Um, but things are starting to, you know, the light's at the end of the tunnel. As I say, we're heading into a stronger direction now. Yes, and, you know, we've lost some customers. Um, equally, we've lost some distributors, those that didn't have the staying power to get through challenging times. To be honest, some of those people probably would have ended up going anyway. You know, they're the sort of people that would have fallen at a hurdle, whether it be now or next year. Yeah, we might have got a bit more length out of them and they would have earned a little bit more money because they would have kept going. But the point is, is they weren't the committed ones. Um, and that's the point. The commitment of you guys on tonight, 150 of you and many others that haven't been able to tune in tonight that are really committed to make the business work for them, have stuck through the challenges. And if you can handle these challenges, you can handle uh, a lot of things going forward. You know, yes, we've lost some customers, but as I've been saying to people in my own team, and, you know, myself, because I've had a couple of customers who have had a, a, a real moan about some of the delays in orders and, and, and some of the other things that are going on. You know, at the end of the day, we can always, when everything's running ship shape like it used to and like it will do even better going forward, because we're now in our own warehouse with a level of freedom the company's never had before, we can just put a newsletter out and say, you know, new warehouse, full stock available, 
and that will give people more confidence to order again. So if it means you lose a few customers and in a few months time you start up with them again with a newsletter, do you know what? Many of those will come back on board. So don't panic about that. You know, in business, and remember you are in business. You're in business uh, for yourself here, although obviously with, with Clean Easy as your wholesaler here. Businesses lose and win contracts all the time. You know, if you're running your own business and lost a, a major contract, perhaps 50% of your turnover, that's half your business down the drain. What we know here is that we've got safety in numbers. That safety in numbers is customers, and if you've got a, a reasonably sized team, safety in distributor numbers as well. So yes, we will win and lose contracts just as a business does. Um, and these times have perhaps made that more challenging, but you know, if you work, once the business is, is, is ready and up and running again, and it's, well, I say ready, once it's up and running again, it's always ready, um, you know, but, it, but we're getting there. You know, Michael's announced that there is an investment coming through uh, from the Americans now, the, the owners of the company, that will uh, put to pay a lot of the out-of-stock problems that we've been uh, struggling from. And do you know, another thing, <clears throat> I've heard people say who are building a team, I can't recruit right now because I can't bring people into week-long deliveries and you know 20 30 percent out of stocks do you know what new distributors won't know the difference um for example you know i'm not going to slate any other company but there's a company beginning with a and ending with von uh been around for years and, and are great at what they do but their distributors typically wait two or three weeks for them to get a delivery off the company and often find that because they might place an order, you know, they place an order once, once a month, once a campaign, as they call them. Um, if that distributor's allocated delivery or ordering day is at the end of a campaign, they will find that they won't get a lot of products because they've been ordered prior by the other distributors. So, you know, new distributors don't know what to expect when they join. So at the end of the day, don't stop recruiting. You know, because when things get better, that it will just be even better for the distributors, the new people that have started. But, the, you know, so there's no point whinging and whining to a new distributor and say, oh, it's terrible, isn't it? You know, terrible to what? Terrible to what we had three, four, five, six months ago? They won't know that because they weren't here. So at the end of the day, you know, a week for delivery for new distributors isn't an issue because they don't know any different until it gets better, of course, and then they will see how it was and how it will become. Do you know, guys, when it's tough, you've got to set some goals. You know, what income per period do you want to be earning by Christmas? Um, you, you won't go very far in this business if you haven't got a focus. If you don't know where you're going, it's like getting in a car, not knowing where you're driving. You know, you've got a destination in mind when you get in a car. Have a destination in mind with this business. It doesn't have to be long term. It can be what do you want to be earning per period by Christmas and beyond. You know, what do you want to achieve in the business long term? There's a lot available. Um, you know, there's a lot of money there. There's a lot that you can do with this, not just financially, but for um, personal achievement's sake and helping other people achieve what they want too. Um, but do you know how to get it? And if you don't, speak to your sponsor. There are people upline from you that know exactly how to achieve what you want to achieve. Go and find somebody that's earning more money than you in the business and listen and learn from them. You'll be surprised how many people are willing to share their experiences and their education with you about how they've achieved it. Because if you do what they've done, you'll naturally get what they've got. Not straight away, but oh, certainly in time. Do you know you need a strong burning desire that are stronger than any challenges? At the end of the day, you know, if your desire is eight out of 10 to achieve in this business, and the challenges are five out of 10. Do you know your desire is stronger than the challenges? And yes, the challenges are five. They're, you know, they're, they're there, they, they exist, they are uncomfortable, but your desire is so much stronger that you'll jump over those challenges. You'll find a way. But do you know what? If, you, if the challenges remain at five, but your desire is a bit wishy-washy, you know, you know you should be doing this business, but the desire really isn't strong enough, the goals aren't strong enough, you'll plod along, you're quite happy to do that. You may be a three or a four, but the challenges are still at a four. So what happens? You meet the challenges head on, and you don't have the will and the desire and the determination to rise above them. You'll, you'll meet them, or you'll be below them. The challenges will beat you, and you'll fall at the hurdles. And therefore, you need to have 
uh, you know, you need to do some soul searching, sit down and set some goals and decide what you want out of the business and then talk to the people that are earning the money on how to achieve it. And you know, I'm going to talk about this because, as I say, I joined the business, what, 11 years ago and 18 months and I built a, a, a £1,200 a month income and left my job and went full time. And I quite quickly, within about a year, built up to a £2,000 a month income. But when I got there, because Robin, my wife, was working, and although I had stronger goals, the desire and the burning desire wasn't strong enough. So I came, kind of kept just ticking the business over, and in two grand a month, Robin had a full-time salary, and we were comfortable. Um, you know, weren't living the lifestyle I wanted, but comfortable. You know, we had money to spend and money to blow. So there I was in 2011. Three years after hitting that first £2,000 a month check, and I was still earning it. And, you know, as I say, I was comfortable doing that. But what happened in 2011? Well, the year before, we had our first son. And uh, Robin had, a, you know, maternity leave. And at the end of maternity leave, her income was gone. She was made redundant. So now we were living on just £2,000 a month, which some people's, you know, a good income to live on. But for us, when half of that £2,000 goes on your mortgage, doesn't leave a lot left for bills and leaves even less to feed yourself and absolutely zero to live a life, you know. Um, so with Robin's income gone, we decided that we, she would join the business. She had a choice. We had a choice. She either went back to work um, and we then spent most of her income on childcare or she got involved part-time because obviously a year old, you know, a year old son requires a lot of full-time, uh, you know, attendance, you know, and looking after. But we needed £3,000 a month to live on uh, and get by and maybe just have a little bit left over. So we decided to make a plan. We could either cut business expenses, i.e. lower the investment. So in other words, not renew our catalogues when the new edition came out, not put money into advertising to recruit for distributors, or we had the choice of increasing the income so you know we could lower our expenses but not increase our income and by lowering expenses we were lowering our investment to grow a business we would never grow above two thousand pound a month by cutting expenses but if we kept the expenses the same and just worked harder we could get that income up to three grand a month as quickly as possible you know, we had a choice. We could either retail an extra £2,000 a month, and at that point I was retailing £2,000 a month personally from the catalogue, so I could up it to four grand a month and plug most of that extra £1,000 that we needed. But then I'd fall into this trap of becoming a retailer with a bit of a team. But I knew that I could build a team. You know, I'd already achieved it. I, was, I already had a sizable team. I think our turnover at that time was about twenty to £25,000 a month. So, you know, I had an established team. I knew that if I increased my front line, that is people recruited under me directly by a minimum of 12 persons, based on that, at that level, you'd be earning £50 a month per active person per period. If I could keep 12 new people into the, into the business, I'd be earning an extra 50 quid. Um, per person, that's a thousand pounds, you know, over a thousand pounds in in in, in a month. Um, no, it's not. It's five hundred actually, but six hundred. The point is, I could do that and build on from there, and and work harder and get further with it. So, what do we do next? Well, I increased newspaper ads. In those days, newspaper ads were really effective, um, and they were reasonably priced. You know, these days they don't give you that much. Uh, returning i'm not saying they don't work of course anything works but at the end of the day you know a lot of people look on the internet nowadays for uh, for for you know for, for 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 jobs for work for extra income but in those days we increased our, our adverts from two to three adverts going out every single week in the local newspapers we also started flyering you know that was something i really didn't enjoy doing putting out uh, flyers through letterboxes uh, looking for catalog distributors um, putting them on car windscreens, etc. But it was a very um, cheap way. When you've got no money, more money to invest, it's a very cheap way of building uh, a business. It's very time-consuming, but you'll find the time when you haven't got the money. You know, we're in a fortunate position now where I don't need to go out necessarily and fly because I'll just throw 100 or 200 quid into an advertising pot um, and, and get the leads to come straight to me. But, you know, that might save me time, and I'd rather buy the time now in those days, I couldn't buy the time. I didn't have the money for it. So I spent a lot of time out there flyering. 
and I got better and practiced my presentation skills, speaking to new uh, prospects. You know, I realized that if I wanted to make, you know, the effort I was putting in work, I had to be better at the effort I was doing and learn how to get better at uh, presenting the business. I can combine retail rounds. You know, I found that I was doing four different customer base rounds each period and they were adjacent to each other. So why not condense them into, you know, three rounds, eventually into two rounds. So that I only actually used retail twice a month. And although I spent more time out there retailing, I didn't have to drop my um, focus on team building, coaching uh, and support for the team. I could focus on one activity at a time instead of doing a bit of sponsoring, then dropping tools down to go and retail, then picking up sponsoring, dropping tools down to do deliveries. I could do everything in bulk in one go. It made life a lot simpler for me. And I also followed a strict plan. You know, when I was ticking over earning £2,000 a month, and I appreciate for, for many of you on right now, you know, who are not earning that, that'd be a fantastic income. But when you get to that and you can grow beyond it, you kind of get content with it. You start to fall into a, a cycle of, well, I've done enough work to keep my £2,000 a month income. It's a nice sunny afternoon. It's three o'clock. I'll grab a newspaper and a pack of beers and go and sit in the garden. You know, fine. It ticked my business over, but it didn't grow me a, a, a further income. It didn't give me any more freedom uh, or, or any more, um, you know, it certainly didn't replace Robin's income. And of course, the other thing I did was read self-development, particularly important when we're going through challenges as we are, you know, in the general business right now. Yeah, read business books and development books on how to handle um, obstacles, challenges, rejections, um, and all the other things. And more importantly, the negative voice that goes on in our own mind, because our own mind can be our best friend and worst enemy. And, you know, when the negative thoughts creep in, it can be like a, a garden with weeds growing. Once they start, they don't stop. And the development and the reading can help you trim your garden back and keep it fresh. It's really important and often underestimated in this business. I wouldn't have achieved anything like what I've achieved without it, without the self-development side. And I duplicated exactly what the growers were doing. I mentioned it earlier. If you want to grow, go and talk to somebody who's growing. There's an upline above you, whether it's your sponsor, but it may not be, but it, it, it likely be your sponsor's sponsor or your sponsor's sponsor's sponsor and so on. Somebody upline from you that will be able to teach you as long as they're growing themselves. Because, you know, again, there are people in the business who have achieved a lot, but if they haven't grown or done a lot in the last few years, it's quite easy to lose touch uh, and the weeds grow themselves. You know, so find out the people that are moving forward and listen and learn from them. And of course, I tracked everything I was doing. I literally wrote down uh, the number of flyers I was doing every day, the number of presentations, uh, the, you know, the amount of people joining so that if I had a, a slack period where things weren't going my way, I could compare that period to a previous successful period and see if I've done anything different. You know, sometimes you think you're busy when you're not doing as much as you thought you were or as much as you were doing when you were being more successful in terms of growth in the business. So keep a track of what you're doing. So this is how I built the business in 90 days. You know, over in 2011, between period eight and period 10, I increased uh, my business by £10,000 uh, as, a, as a team, as a group. I got my check up by a thousand pounds to that three thousand pound a month that we were looking for, and I did that in three months. I had more people quit the team than ever. Why? Because I had more people that I recruited than ever. Of course, the more people that you speak to, the more people are going to say no to you and reject you for the business. But it's not a rejection. It's a not right now in most cases, or it's just not suitable for them. But the point is, is that the more no's you have, the more yeses you have. The more people you recruit, the more people you're going to lose. But you know what? The more people are going to stick as well. I followed the magic formula that we uh, that we um, use in our, our business, and that is 2010 -1. If you um, get 20 people that are interested, and I'm not talking a fleeting inquiry on Facebook. I'm talking about somebody who says they would like to progress to the next level, um, you know, and, and find out and, and actually commit to actually talking about the business with you, whether it be on phone, person to person or whatever, if you can get 20 people 
10 of them will show up. 10 of them won't, but focus on the 10 that will. Speak to the 10 that you can see through a presentation. And out of those 10, a minimum of one people will join every week. Now, if you keep that up every single week, which is what I did in those three periods in 2011, I can guarantee that you will put on thousands of pounds worth of turnover onto your bottom line in your business and your income as well. And of course, again, I track myself all the time. So in 15 weeks, over the summer of 2011, into the, up to the October, I put 22,000 flyers out, 22,750. That's a lot of flyers. We'll actually break it down. And it's only 1,500 a week, 300 a day, five days a week. It's about an hour and a half's work, that's all, a day. I generated 147 leads from those flyers, so that worked out that one in 150 odd flyers generated me a lead in the quietest time of the year. Because summer is. 167 people out of those 147 I presented the opportunity to. Out of those, nine joined. Seven of them went on to place orders, earn them, earning themselves money and putting bottom line into my team. And do you know that was just one rod in the pond because I also had my newspaper ads out at the time and we were just starting up with the internet as well. So what are the rods in the pond? Well, flyers are just one of them. You can put shop adverts in, looking for distributors in your local area. You know, um, you can go into a shop, don't approach it and say, how much is it to put an advert in? Just say, look, I'm providing a local service to the community. Um, you know, I'm looking for people to provide work for. So can I put this up in your shop to help, you know, people out of work in the local area? Do you know, they may very well waiver the charge for putting a shop advert in. Three foot rules, meaning that you're in a supermarket queue, for example. And, you know, the queue's taking a little bit long and the person in front of you or behind you starts striking up a conversation. And, um, you know, you might like them and see the right, you know, personable person. You could say, hey, yeah, I'm looking for somebody really friendly, just like you. If you know anybody who's looking um, for work part time or, or full time at the moment, um, here's a flyer. Please pass it on. Never use the are you looking for work direct approach because people will kind of step back and think, oh, I'm on the spot here, but use the third party. Oh, if you know anyone that's looking for work, by the way, if you know anyone, just pass this, this on to them. Putting posters up as well, you can do that. There's internet ads, of course. You know, you find um, places to put adverts on the internet, and there are uh, numerous places you can do that, including free job websites. Social media, Facebook, great. Another way of getting interest. The war market, you know, people go straight out and look um, for the Joe public, when you've got a whole social network of people that you can be talking to, drip feeding them, you know, just bits of information about the business until such time as they turn around and say, oh, I'm interested in finding out more. Do you know, um, these are the things that work, but also be creative. Don't waste time on something that your upline will tell you, look, we haven't done it, so I don't know if it will work. But if you've got some dead time and spare time and you're achieving your targets each week that you set yourself, then start investigating other little options that you can do as well. Uh, it's one thing, you know, in this modern world that we've got to be entrepreneurial and, in, and, and innovative with our ideas. But, you know, I did that for 90 days. We call it a 90 day plan where if you bring one person a week, every weekend from the activity that I've just mentioned, you will build a big business. But you know what? Don't take your foot off then, because if you take your foot off after 90 days, you won't go back to where you were, but you will slide a little bit because obviously you're still bedding in lots of new people. So do it for two years of that kind of level of activity. And if you do it for two years, I can guarantee you right now, and I'll put a hundred pound on it to anyone that's a betting person, because I'll put the money on it, but you will have a, bro a permanent bronze executive business with a two to three grand per period residual income. What do I mean by residual income? That means that's an income that comes to you even if you don't work that month. Take the month off, you still earn because you, you, your business is still turning over because your team is still turning over. But you've got to give it a couple of years before you're going to have a walk away income like that. You can earn that much quicker than that, but the stop putting out catalogs, stop recruiting and you won't have that. You need a couple of years of dedication to earn that kind of residual income. And I did it for three to four years before I had my, or we had our second child. 
and then yeah I fell off the 90 day plans um, and I but I built a residual income by that if you do it for five years solid that is five years no holidays you know working around the clock seven days a week sounds horrendous doesn't it but you know what five years of your life you'll have a permanent SED business with at least a five grand a month residual income again five thousand pound a month you don't have to work or you've got another choice you spend 45 years up until from the age of 20 up till 65 and that will go up and keep going up exchanging hours for income the minute you stop working you have no income because you're exchanging hours for a direct income and you know what people will say oh two to five years of working this business no holidays you know seven days a week oh that's terrible that's going to be really hard well do you know what's harder working 45 years for a boss for the rest of your life and having no income at the end of it yeah you might get Saturday and Sunday off in that 45 years but you, you take those 45 years put five years of those 45 years into working a solid business and you'll have 40 years of not having to worry about ever working again if you choose not to of course if you want to earn more than five grand a month you can keep working you know ooh, this is not showing very well on my screen here so I'm struggling to see this um, yeah you can't change the numbers you know the numbers are the numbers this is a numbers game numbers do not um, you know prejudge people numbers do not discriminate if you work the numbers it doesn't matter who you are your background your age your race your sex it really makes no difference numbers are a, a universal law they do not favor anybody so you cannot change them you cannot get better than them you will get no worse than them either so if you cannot generate 20 leads of interested people who engaging and wanting to find out more about the business if you cannot do that a week then you're not doing enough work you're not doing enough activity and you or you're not doing enough variety of activities if you cannot present the business to 10 people out of those 20 leads so if you cannot find that you can complete the conversation with half the people that have shown you real interest not just fleeting what's this kind of thing I'm talking about yes I've, I've seen the video that you've sent me on Facebook tell me more about it that's a proper lead. that's a proper lead but if you can't get half of those to commit to actually speaking to you about the business then you are doing something wrong in the way that you are approaching them and you need to speak to your upline if you cannot get an average of one person per 10 people that you present the business to joining then you are not presenting the business in the correct way you're either not asking them the right questions to find out what it is they're looking for and then suiting this opportunity to their needs or you're waffling and going off script and talking them in and talking them back out of the business again if you're finding that more than one in five people that join the business are they not actually putting an order on and not starting up then you are not present either you're not presenting the business right so they think they're joining something completely different to what clean easy is all about or you're creating confusion by not training them correctly or not training them at all if you're not getting one in four of your new people starting to a 10 percent volume bonus or more each month then you are not coaching them correctly and again you need to seek advice on how to um, help people achieve an income we know that if people get a bonus in the early days of this business and earn a couple of hundred quid plus a month they are more likely than ever to stick to this business and stay with you but three out of four people that you bring in will quit you cannot prevent it is a law of the numbers in this business sponsor and teach and move on to the next remember your time is, is yours and it's precious so spend time yes on talking and communicating with your team but not so much time that you end up not having any time to go out and continue building your team don't let people rob you of time because it is precious you won't get it back if you identify any of these issues that apply to any one of you that's on the call tonight on this webinar then you need to look at how to improve and polish your skills 
by learning and speaking to your sponsor on how to do it and attending meetings as well. Do you know there are three types of people in this business when we when we bring them in? There's the big, um, that's the tops. We call it the tops, the middles, the bottoms. Okay, that's how I call it. I've just got this uh, chart of uh, Google Images and I couldn't find one with top, uh, middles, and bottoms, but it still applies. You've got your tops. Now, the tops are maybe 1% of the people that you ever will recruit into this business. They are the ones, the go getters, the jet setters. They will get on with it. Very minimal input from you. They'll ask you a few questions. Off they go and they, they, they make a business. And they're great, but you don't find them very often. Then you've got those at the, at the lower end, the bottoms. You know, they make up more than half of the people that you'll recruit. You know, you won't get a lot out of these people. They'll come in or maybe excited, but perhaps don't have a work ethic, um, don't understand the business, however hard you teach them. Uh, they'll put some volume through and they'll move off. They'll earn themselves a bit of money and give you a bottom line. But they're valuable because the bottom line that they put in could make the difference between you qualifying for a conference or getting a new bonus level. But the people that you really want to focus on in this business are the middles. Because the middle people come in, they have something about them, they've got potential. But you know what, they have no belief in the business. They don't understand what they're doing. Now if they don't get the correct coaching, those middle people will quite quickly fall into the bottom category. They'll disappear off and they'll fail. But with the correct coaching, and if you help them grow their belief by teaching them what to do correctly, they go out and they get some results, that belief will develop and you hold their hands metaphorically um, and coach them through it. You can promote those middle people into the top people. The middle people are quite a large chunk of people. A good 20% of the people that you'll go out and recruit 30% will come from that middle group. And those are the people that can become the big people, but you won't, you, if you're constantly looking for the best person, you know, they are so few and far between, the go-setters go that get off, to the, off the ground straight away and go out and build a big business without very little input from you, they're very, very few and far between. It's the fairly sizable middle crowd that with coaching and support, you can turn into the top people. And that's how coaching makes all the difference in this business. Otherwise, you're just throwing mud against the wall. Recruiting people, they go. Recruiting people, they go. Work with people, and you'll be surprised how far the people will take their business and your business with it. Fortune is in the coaching, guys. So some don'ts. Don't assume that you're already developed enough. You know, no one is. At the end of the day, I'm still on a journey of learning, and I will continue to be so. So I still read books, I still attend meetings, I still learn every day something about the business. Probably more so lately with the challenges than, than I have done in a while. It's been a good learning curve. It'll make for a stronger business as things settle down and we get back on track for all of us that have taken the opportunity to learn from the challenges. Don't assume that you know what someone wants out of the business. You know. Just because you join for 50 quid a week or just because you join because you saw a network marketing opportunity, don't assume that everybody else will think the same. Everybody joins for different reasons. Find out what their reason is and work with them according. That's part of the coaching. Knowing why they joined is part of the coaching because then you've got something to work with. Don't give your precious time to anybody until they've proven they can follow their first plan. You know, I've had so many people over the years come back to me and say, I show me another plan, I need another plan, I need another plan. Do you know what? You're, why didn't your first plan work? Okay, you couldn't fit it in with the hours that you've got in your job. I'll give you another plan. But if that plan, and they've agreed that plan will work, if that plan then doesn't work, I'm not going to spend time giving them another plan until they can show they can at least follow a plan. You know, because otherwise you're going to spend your whole life working with people at the detriment of people that aren't doing what they should be doing, at the detriment of you finding more people who could be doing what they say they will do. Don't waste time with the people out, uh, with people at, at the expense of lead generating and appointments. I think I've mentioned that two or three times already. Have a, don't have a work or investment ethic at the level at which you're currently earning. You will never ever grow. If you are earning five hundred pound a month out of clean easy, and you think, well, I'm only earning five hundred quid a month, so I'm not going to work as if I'm earning two grand a month because I'm not earning it. Yeah, you know. Go out and, earn, and work as if you're earning two grand a month now. 
And yet, next month, you'll earn £600 a month. And the month after, you'll earn £900 a month. Still not the two grand a month. But I guarantee that within three or four months, you'll be earning that two grand a month. And you'll continue earning it, even when you drop your work ethic down a little bit. Because you've built the business. And that's the point. You cannot move in this business until you work harder than what you're earning, than what you've been paid for. Don't look for networkers. Like I said on the last slide, don't look for the 1% of those that you recruit, let alone the population, to be networkers. Just expose everybody into the business. Plug them into your group, um, Facebook chats, group, um, Facebook groups, meetings, of course. They will get involved. Get them involved in the group. Get them involved in the business. Get them involved with other successful people. And you know what? If you do that enough times, they will upgrade themselves. You don't have to go, you know, drag them kicking and screaming to earn more money. If you expose them to people that are already earning more money, they will upgrade themselves. And just because you're earning more than them, it doesn't mean they'll listen to you. They need to see other evidence. They need to see other proof. And leads are leads, guys. Don't stop looking for dross. And I say dross, it sounds an awful word, but you know what? A lot of people out there are. You know, they've got no work ethic. They're looking just for a, a bit of money without minimal amount of work. Do you know what? You won't know who your good person is until they've proven themselves as to what they're, they're able to do. You know, I've got people in my team who I didn't think would go far, who have. I've got people in my team, well, they're not in my team now, who I thought would go far, but didn't have a work ethic. They just knew how to do a lot of this talking, you know. Um, they talk the talk, but didn't walk the walk. And don't build business people's businesses. It's very tempting, you know, if you've got somebody in your team who you particularly like and you think, oh, you know, they need, they're really desperate for money, I'll give them a few people. That will give them a bit more income. Well, you know what? The thing there is that you'll be always indebted to them and they'll always be indebted to you because they won't learn how to be any better than what they're at because what they've achieved you've given to them they won't have learned how to maintain it themselves and should you not be able to do it anymore they will drop backwards and they'll expect you to continue giving them a business and you'll expect them to take to take the reins for themselves and you'll end up at loggerheads it causes fallouts i've seen it time and time again across the network and don't expect your team to grow faster than you are. You know, if you've got a team where you've got team members who are sponsoring, don't turn around and say, do you know, my team aren't bringing enough people in. Look at how many people you're bringing in. You set the pace. You set the example. Do you know, my, my team started building big teams below me in my network when I started building a big front line of my own. They saw I could do it. it I made it look easy because the results were coming in, and they started doing the same. Do you know, guys, the question I've got to ask you is, is it, is it worth it? Is it worth giving just a few years of your life to work this business hard so that you can enjoy incomes? Because, you know, that was our check last um, November last year for a four-week period. And it wasn't the effort that we put in that period, although I do work hard. I still work hard. I play hard and I take time out too. But when I'm, on, when I'm in my arena and when I'm on it, I'm on it big time. But it wasn't November's effort that got me that check last year. It was all the years compounded. And, you know, if I take time out, I'll still earn an income along those lines. Obviously, not so much recently with some of the challenges that we've had. Not all the stock is going through that uh, our distributors are picking up. But, you know, we will have those incomes back and more because now the company's got its own warehouse and is not tied. It's the first time in, in so many years. Um, we are all able now to build further and, and further and further with all the new things that 2018 will bring. Once the company settled down, Michael will have lots and lots of plans to announce next year of the way that we can move forward and make more money than we've ever made. You know, the other things that we've achieved as well, you know, top left hand corner, that was Dubai 2012. My God. I look about 15 years younger there. <laughs> it, was only, it was only five years ago. But Robin always wanted to swim with dolphins, and that's something that we achieved, not just once, but twice, because we did it again in Jamaica when we went two years ago. Get the opportunity to go without asking the boss for time off work and worrying about how much it will cost. We able to go off to South Africa, because my wife is originally from Cape Town, um, and that's the view from the local beach about a mile down the road from where her mum lives. You know. 
If we walk on the beach, that's exactly the scenery we see. We can choose to do that whenever we want. Do you know, three or four years ago, when we first started hitting our five, six thousand pound a month checks, we decided to buy ourselves a, an apartment out in Spain so that we had somewhere, a little holiday home and an investment to go to in the sun. But because we kept going out there a few times a year, we fell in love with the place. And when the villa on the bottom right hand corner came up for sale at the end of last year for an absolute bargain, we thought we've got to have it. We've got to have that. And we now have that as well. And we stay there when we go out now, of course. But we rent those out and make a little bit of extra money from doing so, mainly to cover the costs of running the places, but just a little bit of extra money as well. So, you know, the harder you work, the more opportunities that open up for you, the more investment opportunities you get to make more money from, from the things that you're able to invest in as well. So it's a win-win situation using the clean, easy business as a vehicle to get yourselves there. Do you know, and the reason why I've worked hard for those years is, 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 is this. I mean, it's just fundamentally, it's not for the villas and the holidays and the trips and the money. It's for the freedom of lifestyle that we have. You know, I've seen my two boys grow up. You know, my father, who had two boys, I've got a brother. You know, I, until I was old enough to stay up a bit later at night, perhaps nine or ten years of age, you know, prior to that age, I was in bed when my dad got home from work. I only saw him at the weekends and he was too bloody tired because he used to run around the country as a sales rep. He was too bloody tired to do anything with me. And then he had the car to wash and the chores to do and the gardening to do. So, you know, I pick up my kids from school when I want. Sometimes Robin does it, sometimes I do. You know, it depends. Sometimes I like to have a five, ten minute break from work in the business just to jump out and, and see my kids, pick them up from school, bring them home, give them back to Robin and get on with my work. You know, I love doing that. I've seen them grow up. I spend time with them. Uh, yes, I work hard, but I choose when I work and I can fit it around my family. And that's why I do it, you know, for my family. So it's not a, just about the money and the investment. It's about the, you know, the, the um, time freedom that you have with your family because they're only going to be young once. And this was taken 18 months ago, this photo, and they've already changed since then, you know, massively since then, you know, and I've seen that and I've been lucky to enjoy that. So I'm going to finish you on the final words. Um, Jim Rohn, again, we talked about self-development and reading books earlier. Jim Rohn is a fantastic business guru. You know, he, he writes really light-hearted reads. They're not in-depth, intense reads. He's got a great sense of humor. He passed away about four or five years ago, sadly. But he wrote a lot of books about business and how to have the right mentality and attitude that will enable you to build a business in your chosen field. And Jim Rohn turned around and said, look, don't wish it was easier. Wish you were better. You know what, guys? If you build a business, you'll make it easier. You'll get more experience. You'll get better at what you'll, you do. You'll develop more of a talent at being able to coach and work and teach and people. Um, so the, the more you do, the easier it gets because you get better. So, guys, make it easier. Just be better. And I hope that helps you guys tonight. Thanks for having me on.